simple but so good. While I am drinking my medicine, I'm not allowed to eat anything that's fried. And the noodles in here are fried. to drop off some packages and I just plan on driving around and running some errands while I talk to you guys. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me some questions and I'm gonna go through them with you. I'm back in the car. And I'm a little hungry, so I'm gonna do a little <laughs> McDonald's drive-through. All right, let's get started with the question. Okay, so the first question that I got asked is, can you make your videos longer? And you guys, I really want to, but I'm just like a little worried that it's gonna get boring. Hi, can I get um, McChicken and uh, a six-piece chicken McNugget? Okay, thank you. The next question is, can you finish the story of the guy you bought the $100 speakers for? <laughs> if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I did a little story time in one of my videos. I'll leave the video up in the cards. Basically about this guy that I used to date back in college in Korea and my nightmare experience of getting him a Christmas present. So after that video, you guys were curious about what he got me for Christmas. So he got me a scarf, it was like this really bright teal scarf and it had this hood attached to the scarf which didn't, it wasn't like big enough to flop over my head, it like stopped at the back of my head, which I get it, I have a big head. What? Okay, now I'm gonna find an empty parking lot where I can just eat it. He just became like way too controlling and I was not about it. I had given them a heads up that my male friend that I grew up with in California was visiting. We had made some like dinner plans, but then the day comes, the whole dinner, he's just blowing up my phone. And that's when I knew I gotta get the heck out of there. You guys are totally blasting me like, Michelle, how could you be so dumb? I didn't think you were like that. Which, you know, I completely get. <laughs> I, I think the same way as well. Ooh, babe. Got some six-piece chicken nuggets with some sweet and sour sauce. The next question is, any tips on personal finance and how to save? This is a really good question and I wish I had learned more about this in school, like about personal finances and investment because I think this is so important when you enter like the real world. There are a few things that I've learned and picked up here and there that's helped me a lot and to save aggressively. I started doing this at the beginning of the year when COVID got really bad and I just have to sit myself down and learn how the heck I'm gonna save better. So the first thing that I did was I opened up a high yield savings account so that I can earn a little bit more interest rather than having it sit in my checking account or your you know typical savings account that you have with your bank because we all know you literally get no 
interest with those. And once I put everything away into a savings account that I don't really look at, I no longer had the urge to buy things that I don't really need. I'm also working on an emergency fund. The rule of thumb that I hear all the time is to put aside three months worth of bare bone necessary expenses. Personally, I like to kind of aim for the six to eight month bracket. Um, I also do have a brokerage account where I have my retirement fund and mutual funds um, set up there. But yeah, that's kind of what I do. I think it's really about making small little habits. These little contributions can go such a long way and they will add up pretty fast. Everything I told you guys, I literally picked up very recently. Just do a little bit of research and you'll be surprised how much um, you can learn. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How did I start Little Puffy? Um, some of you guys who are new here may not know where Little Puffy <laughs> came from. It actually started off as like an inside joke here on my channel because that's something that I always said in my videos. I had a bowl of noodles last night so I'm a little puffy. Some of you guys were saying like you should throw that on a t-shirt and so that's exactly what I did and that is um, how Little Puffy became Little Puffy. <laughs> as you guys know, Little Puffy is very, very homemade. I built the website, photo shoots were made at home, packaging and fulfillment is all done at home, customer service is done by yours truly. You know, everything is done at home. <laughs> It took a while for me to kind of understand how to use Shopify and, you know, learn about UPS and logistics and all of that. Um, but I literally learn something new every single day and that's something that I value so much. Um, let me just finish these nuggets because I need to move on to my McChicken. My armpits are sweating. <laughs> Kind of spicy. What the heck? I'm kind of tasting kimchi a little bit. It's weird. Mm -hmm. okay. Next question When did you embrace your Korean roots since a lot of foreign born Asians have identity crisis? So I was actually born in Korea, but my family immigrated when I was two. So Growing up, I never really felt like I had an identity crisis. I had literally no idea that my language fluency was so basic till I went to Korea. So once I started to learn Korean, I had the ability to engage in more meaningful and deeper conversations with my parents. And I learned more about my culture, my parents' upbringing, their whole immigration story and surviving in a foreign country. And that itself made me very proud of my roots. So my battery died, so I switched over to my other camera. All right, so the next question is, what fragrance are you wearing? Well, why I'm so glad you asked. This is so strange and so random. But recently, I got into this real, real obsession with fragrance and fragrance reviews. I was convinced that I needed this particular fragrance, which I actually have here. Just came in the mail today. She's so beautiful. This is Maison Francis Kirk de John. Kirk de John? Baccarat Rouge Fathority. Oh my God. I've actually had one spritz on my wrist. And ever since that, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I'm gonna be honest, so many people rave about this and it's become really popular. It's a niche perfume. Look at these words that I'm using. Let me tell you, it took me a month and a half to really let this sink and to give myself time to process if I really need to buy this $300 perfume. And a month and a half later, I still had the same excitement, same obsession. And I was like, you know what? It's the holiday, I'm gonna treat myself. So this is what I got myself for Christmas, you guys. <gasps> This packaging is insane. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I smell this, it's so good. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. This smells so freaking good um it's sweet 
but it's not offensive or overpowering at all. That's what everyone said in their reviews and I totally get it. The notes for this perfume, we have saffron, jasmine, amberwood, ambergris, fir, resin, and cedar. And everything just blends so beautifully and smoothly. This just like made my entire day today. <sighs> Smell it guys. I just got my mom her first ever designer bag. But we're gonna do a little unboxing because it's a special day. <laughs> so I saw this thing on Instagram where you feed your dog <laughs> like one piece of food and see what his reaction is. And Dobby is eating serpent turf today. <laughs> Stay. Okay, go. The wonders of life got the prettiest side for everyone to enjoy.